Hi folks, Dr. Christine Sauer here and welcome to today's Facebook live and live stream here. Uh, this is my Fear Good Fat Loss uh, offering and program and today uh, I am streaming about the four pillars of weight loss, the eating part, which is a diet solution, how to eat or lasting weight loss success. And as always, everything I say is completely unscripted. Now I know what I want to say, the way it comes out, I'm not quite sure. So feel free to comment, uh, send me questions, whatever you want. And if you or someone you know would be interested in being coached live after one of those presentations, uh, I do uh, free weight loss related uh, my brand of weight loss related coaching after the teaching part, which the teaching part is about 10, 15 minutes. And I hope you enjoy it because it is kind of counterproductive, sometimes paradoxical, but I know it works because as you know, I myself was at some point about 150 pounds heavier. That was about 16 years ago, 17 now. Alrighty, let's get right into it. I will share my screen. Now, one thing about housekeeping, if you send me questions now, I will not be able to answer because I'm totally focused on giving you the best value and information and a little piece of my brain uh, that I can. So I will answer every question and every comment after I'm off the air. Alrighty, let's get started. I'll share my screen because I'm organized, I'll try to be, and uh, I want to show you what I mean when I say the pillars of weight loss, eating. Let's share it. Okay, I hope by now you can see what I am seeing, which is the presentation. Uh, pillar number two, key number two to lasting brain-driven weight loss. The diet solution, and I call it intentional, intuitive eating. Now, we talked before about the four pillars of lasting brain-driven weight loss. We talked before about the mindset part, and I was teaching about that last week, and you can review that in the guides. I have the summary video also in the guides. Today, we are talking about the eating part. And the next week, I'll be talking about the movement pillar and the week after about the support pillar. And then I'll continue on to teach about different aspects of each pillar. But before I start on doing that, I wanted to give you all an overview of what's to come. So here we are about the four pillars of lasting brain-driven weight loss. It's the eating part. Let's talk about what I call IIE, <laughs> intentional intuitive eating. Now, I call it the diet solution for a reason. And at the end of this video, you will know what I mean. Now, on top of the pyramid for a reason is the notion, eat foods that feel right. The problem that many of us that are going on a diet have is that they want to follow the instructions perfectly. So we do meal plans, we do recipes, we uh, avoid certain foods, we eat only certain foods according to the diet we are on. Now, that does not work in the long run. It may work for a few weeks, the weight comes off, and then it comes back up. That's why I focus on the yo-yo dieting part, why the weight comes back up and how to prevent it from going back up. There's many diets that work. My personal favorite is uh, uh, intermittent fasting because it works. It's easy to do. It doesn't take any time, really. You don't have to prepare much at all. Actually, when you don't have time to prepare, you just don't. <laughs> There's very few rules, and that's what I actually will teach in the challenge coming up in January and in March. Uh, and you will lose weight very fast with that uh, uh, kind of, if you want to eating plan, it's not really an eating plan, but it's not really about when I talk about intentional intuitive eating, I'm talking about how to learn to eat intuitively so we actually feel the foods 
because most of us don't. And I'll talk about what I mean more in a little bit. And we need to add an intention to our eating and not just mindlessly wolf everything down. We need to eat with purpose and a plan and vary our eating patterns. Now we need a little bit of a plan. That doesn't mean a, a rigid meal plan, but we need to have a little bit of a plan so when we go shopping, we know what we want to buy and go with the list so don't we don't fall prey to impulse buying and impulse eating. So actually you will save money on this plan, which is not really a plan. <laughs> Uh, of course, we, ne we need to learn a little bit about nutrition and food preparation. And I like to teach it in a way that's not just fun, but very practical and actually time saving. And you will just take a deep breath and say, I didn't know it was that easy because I've been doing it now for 61 years. Well, no, I haven't. I'm 61 years old and I've started to prepare food when I was about five years old, to be honest. So it's only 56 years. But I know a little bit about cooking food preparation. I cooked for the family. I was working full time and still cooking. And I know what works, what doesn't work. So that said, I'm all about brain health, mental health. So I will also teach you how to train your brain to love the foods that love you back. I love that. It's a quote by my mentor, Dr. Daniel Amen. We'll talk about that more. Let's go on. What does it mean when I say to Eat foods that feel right. Now, number one, we need to choose foods that agree with our culture and heritage. Not just what's in vogue, what's available maybe, uh, what's on sale, which is good. I always buy, I like to buy stuff that's on sale if it's a food that agrees with my culture and heritage and that I love and that my body loves, that feels good and right. For me now most of the time we are so stuck in our heads in our world that we need to learn to think with our second brain the brain in the gut again so it's important when it comes to food selection to go with your gut feeling to be able to go with our gut feeling we need to know a few things about how the gut actually works that is also things that I'm going to teach and I'm excited about it. How does our gut work? How does it look inside? The anatomy, the physiology. Of course, as a doctor, I know a few things about it and, and some. I'm also a gastrointestinal disease specialist. I love to talk about how to cure IBS for good without no pills because it is possible without restrictive diet. It is all possible. Boy. All things are possible in good time. Never give up to search for a solution that feels right for you. And that applies also to eating. And I avoid the word diet for a reason. It's not about dieting. It's about learning how to eat again. And before eating a meal, it's important to ask yourself, how do I feel about this meal? Because often we sit down because it's time to eat, because we are at a social occasion. We, sometimes we are coerced to eat. I'll never forget how I was coerced at 16 to drink a cup of coffee with milk, which I hated because we were at a teacher's and my parents expected it from me. Now, I wasn't aware at that time that I was made a, an unintuitive decision. I knew I, I didn't like it. So... We need to learn to listen to our intuition and more often to go by what our intuition, our feelings, our inner feelings, our inner voice tells us. And that is harder than you think. So we'll go into it later on. The next step is add intention to eating. Now what I mean by that is eat mindfully. And that is a cliche that has been tried out a lot. And we will go into that and I will teach you how to eat, for example, a raisin. And it will take you five minutes to properly eat it. So it's important to chew every bite carefully, but there's much, much more to it. And it's also important that we set our intention before each meal. And the Christians among you and other religions that pray before meals, they 
uh, set their intention by praying and asking the blessing of God. And that is great if you are aware that that's what you're doing and it's not just a routine that you learned and just maintained because that's something you do. What I want to do, and that's what I do in my coaching practice all the time, is encourage people to learn to think again, to learn to think for themselves, to learn to use their own brain and mind and judgment and not just take uh, and download what the newest science is, the newest health fad is, what the newest news is from whatever media. No, your brain, your body is a miracle. It's magic. Respect it, love it, use it. And the baggage that you're carrying physically on your body will fall off. Now, the next part that I want to teach is how to eat with purpose and a plan and varying eating patterns. Now, most of us are used, when they go on a diet, it's very rigid. You eat this, you eat that, you make a meal plan and stick to it, right? You lose a lot of discipline. Now, willpower doesn't work. We talked about that last time. It ends by the afternoon and there comes the evening snacking. It's important that your meal plan is flexible. So before you eat a meal or even a snack, ask yourself, what is the purpose of this meal? Am I eating it to nourish myself? And then by all means, go ahead and enjoy it, even if it's ice cream or a piece of chocolate. The focus is on eating it intentional, as I said before, and really enjoying it and focusing on that moment of enjoyment. Not on just wolfing it down to soothe an emotional pain. That can also be a purpose of eating. I did it myself for a long time. When I ate chocolate, I ate three, four bars, everything that was in the house. And then I added whatever was there and really ate myself until I was nearly nausea. And of course, either you throw up, that's called binge eating disorder, or you get big and that's called obesity. Those are both disordered eating patterns, as the expert call it. Now, that doesn't help us because when we call it by a label, what does it do for us? More often than not, nothing good. We need to know how to change it so we can achieve what we want to do. We can eat better. We can eat the way we were meant to eat which is with delight, with joy. We are so fortunate. I'm grateful. We have food available. We have a choice of foods available. We can truly choose foods in the Western world, at least. We are not going hungry perpetually. Now, the flip coin of that is, of course, that we can also choose to eat junk and to choose to eat for reasons that are other as getting nourished. And also, it's important to vary eating patterns. So if you stay, say, eat the same thing every day for all of your life, it's very likely that you at some point get uh, deficient in something and disease develops. It's important to vary it because in our modern nutrition, especially if you eat conventional food, which most of us do because organic or biodynamic food is sometimes hard to come by or it's very expensive or it's fake and it also contains some toxins. So if you eat a variety of food and vary that constantly and support your bodily detoxification system, I'll talk about all of that. I love that topic. I could talk about it for, for years. That's why I wrote books about it. So if you vary that, the toxin load will be more evenly distributed and your body has a chance to use its own detoxification systems. Hope you have detoxification systems in the liver, the gut, the bile, the bowel, of course, the kidneys, the lungs, but also the skin. And one of my favorites is the sauna. I'll talk about it in the movement part because most of the time you'll find the sauna in the gym but we can also have a sauna in the house. And I will talk about autophagy, what it is, how to activate it, and why sauna has benefits, not just for weight loss, but also for five-dimensional health. So next one is learn about nutrition and food preparation. Really, it's important to realize what is in our 
food and what effect does it have on you? How is the food we buy grown, prepared, packaged, and shipped? Now, all the information about this is available, but often we don't bother to look it up. So I'll help you a little bit understand not just what the food label is, you can get that from every nutritionist, but also what effect it has on you and what the ingredients really mean when it comes to detoxification toxins, which one are relatively harmless, even under a naturopathic lens or a natural lens, and which one are maybe even are natural substances, because sometimes uh, substances that are on the label are natural substances. And how really I'll help you to give you um, um, a little hint and tips how we can recognize and research where the food is grown, prepared, packaged, and shipped, and if it is done so in accordance with what agrees with your core beliefs. Now, that is important. It's not just what's healthy, what the science says. No. I want you to focus on your genius zone, on you being the center of your universe and reaching out to the world and enriching the world with your individual presence because you are valuable. And I want you to see that, how valuable a person you really are. You deserve to treat yourself and your body as a temple of God for the Christians of us. I truly mean that. So. How do I want to prepare my meal so it can fulfill my purpose for this food best? And that can be that you bake a wonderful cake because your purpose for the food is to give it as a gift, to have it as a birthday party, to delight everybody in a social setting. That is a valid purpose for food. It's not that a cake necessarily is unhealthy. Just if you eat every day a piece of cake just to not feel so bad, that leads to obesity. That's the secret of people that are always thin. Yes, they have a genetic tendency sometimes that their metabolism is faster. Yes, your thyroid hormones can play a role. We'll talk about that too in the physical parts of health. But it's not always that simple. Now... One of my favorites. How can we train our brain to love the foods that love you back? Now, number one is to find out which foods you love. And I invite you right now to take a notepad and write down a list of the foods that you really love. Don't stop at ice cream and chocolate and cookies. I love them too. But what else is on your list of food that you love? How about apples? How about uh Awesome chicken soup, like your grandma made it. How about a stew, uh, stir fry? I bet there's lots of foods that come to mind that you really love. And then afterwards, you can use your knowledge of nutrition, of, uh, of, of, of what you want to eat and make a decision, which of the foods are foods that love you back. And we'll talk about more about that, that really nourish you and fulfill the purpose that you have for the food right now. So it's important to think about questions like, how can I change my relationship with food so I can use it for the purpose that I want for my life? And that has, of course, another prerequisite. What is the purpose of your life? If you just go, go through life and let the wind of fate blow you around like a balloon, like the clouds in the world, well, you don't know why you're eating. You don't know why you're existing. Why should you pay attention to your weight and your eating pattern? And sometimes we have learned in an unhealthy uh, educational upbringing, in an unhealthy family environment, in an unhealthy pattern of, of, of relationship, even with adverse childhood events have triggered our brain to eat food for other purposes and pack on baggage on a physical body to protect us, often from sexual abuse. It's very, very common in people that are obese. And when you don't deal with that, and I've, I've had many clients that after a few sessions of getting to know each other revealed exactly that. 
and they discovered the memories and they dealt with it and I have techniques to deal with it and I'll share those techniques but of course to deal with traumatic childhood events you need to work with a very well-trained coach or a psychologist that is very well trained to that don't try it alone um, havening techniques is excellent to change traumatic memories that still haunt you into just memories that you can let go at least the feeling that was attached to it. I'll talk about that. Then there's a question, how can I learn to like the food that I would like to eat more of? For example, you say, hmm, I would like to try um, Brussels sprouts. It has a very bad rub for being gross or spinach. So how can I learn to like the food that I would like to eat more of? There are ways to do that, to train your brain to like the things that you want to like. I wrote an article about how to like exercising, even if you hate exercising. And I'll talk more about how we can like foods that we want to like and how we can help our children understand that they can do the same and help them to actually do so. That's a fascinating aspect. I love parenting. I have kids, I have grandchildren, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, one of my son's uh, nannies. We are pre preparing a parenting program. It's amazing. So parenting and family has a lot to do with eating and eating patterns. And then, of course, ask yourself the question, how can I align my food choices with my culture, my heritage, my purpose and value system. Wow. Whoever does that, have you ever consciously thought about it? If your food choices align with that or why you eat? We often don't ask ourselves questions because when we do it in our head, we are so used to immediately go down the spiral and go to our old patterns that are no longer serving us and that led to us becoming obese, unhappy and unhealthy. Wow, there was a lot of information that I touched on and I'll go deeper into everything. I just want to get you excited about what's to come. Now, for those that already want to go deeper underneath that video in the comments, I'll put a link to an appointment and uh, I have a limited amount of them. If you want to, uh, you can book it and we can talk about what it would mean to go deeper with it. And at the moment, ah, Black Friday and the holidays are coming up. I actually have a special offer for you. Now, to repeat that, intentional intuitive eating means to eat food that feel right to you, to know, to feel foods. Many of us have lost that intuition, that feeling for food. I know for the first 38 years of my life, I had no idea that I was even feeling. I wasn't happy, but I just went on. I put a smile on my face. Not a good way to live. So we talked about adding intention to eating, eating with purpose, a plan and varying eating patterns, learn about nutrition and food preparation, and how to train your brain to love the foods that love you back. So what's coming up next week, we'll talk about movement. The third pillar of lasting brain-driven weight loss. And you will see why I don't like to call it exercise. Another cliche that is not helpful most of the time. Alrighty, let's stop the screen share and I am back live. I want to encourage you to really think about the topics I just addressed. Ask me questions. What would you like me to go deeper with in this group in Teaching Free? If you want to be coached on any of the topics that I addressed, please comment below or PM me. Uh, uh, the, if you see the group image, it will soon change. Uh, my social media, Maven, and, and, Nail, and uh, Noel is, is working on that. She's a beautiful lady. She does most of my posts. And I want to invite you. I really want to invite you. If you want to go deeper, book one of the free sessions below or watch the web class. 
where you also can book the session on the website. You go on my website when you go there. You watch what I have to say about lasting weight loss. You will see me share my story. <laughs> and uh, you will meet my dog, Rudy, the sparkle dog. And you also will be able, have the opportunity to book one of the sessions. And of course, first, uh, first book, first serve. My time is limited. But I love to help you out. And before Christmas, before the holidays, before the new year, there are still special offers available in all price ranges. So don't let that hold you back. Just talk to me. I'm accessible. I love talking to people. I just want to help you. Not just lose the weight and feel great, get the energy, feel lighter, but also heal your whole body, your mind, spirit, social relationships, and even the finances, because it all goes together in the five dimensions of health. If you haven't heard me teach about the five dimensions of mental health, of health, of weight loss, I can put the link to that also below, and you'll find it, of course, in the blogs on my website. So when you watch the web class, book the appointment, you will have a chance. Or you can just go to my website, doccristine.com, and look for the blog post about the five dimensions. And you will find me teach a lot about those and what it means. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm uh, excited to do that for you. And uh, I'm looking forward to do more of it. Take care. Bye-bye.